Today we're taking a closer look at the C-Stern V3 sub, or to be more accurate, Z-Stern, as that is German for starfish, which explains the logo. It is a downright shameless copy of the Doxa sub, and to be quite honest, I love it. I'm a huge Doxa sub fan and had the modern 300T which I sold due to it having that stupid flared out bracelet which made it look weird on my small 6.5 inch wrist. Other problems included a faulty clasp that despite having a great on the fly adjustment kept collapsing on itself leaving the watch stuck on my wrist until my watchmaker created a fix by inserting a piece of metal as support. Then there was the wobbly bezel that you could move about from side to side, poor loom, and I never liked the polished part of the bezel that scratched up just from me looking at it. It made me realize the Marais era subs were better and I've been on a hunt for a 1200T for years, but they rarely come up in the configuration I like, the condition I find acceptable and price I'm willing to pay. From time to time I would glance over Doxa's website to see if they at least fixed the bracelet since I figured the wobbly bezel and faulty clasp might have been a one-off lemon since I bought it used. Then these started popping out on my eBay feed. First with the first two generation they were quite frankly bad, especially the first one with a tachymeter bezel on a dive watch. With each new generation they made some changes and tweaks until they made it this one, the V3. After watching a couple of reviews, including Random Rob's, I decided to try one myself and reached out to Seastern to see if they're willing to send one in for an honest review. They accepted my one and only condition of me telling whatever I want, including the good, bad and ugly, and a couple of months later I got the watch. At under $200, I expected it to be nothing special, but at least give me the desired look while being wearable, as this one does have the correct bracelet like the 1200T had. What I didn't expect was that this watch will not only match the 300T, but also be an improvement. That is what the world has come to. Homages that used to be crap and giving you just the looks to now reaching a point where you not only get an incredibly well-built watch for the money, but also one that fixes things the original messed up. First, the bracelet. It doesn't flare out, which makes the end links fully articulating, as there is nothing to rub against the case, making the lug-to-lug -lug of the watch case the total lug-to-lug, -lug, which means a lot for people like me. The clasp is not on the same level as the 300T as it lacks on the fly adjustment, but at least I can take off the watch when I want to without using tools. Then the bezel. No, it doesn't have the action as smooth as the 300T, but it is also not complete garbage while at the same time having absolutely no side to side wobble and instead of the easy to scratch polished part on the bezel has two different brushed parts still giving you distinction between the two without attracting and showing scratches like the original. The movement used is a Seiko NH35 that is a worse movement compared to the ETA and Salida the original came with but again, it is a reliable movement that might not be a great timekeeper, unless you're lucky, but it will also work service-free for years, unlike ETA that, in my experience, really do require periodic maintenance. Then the loom. Not only is it better and brighter than the 300T, but also due to it having a loomed date disc better executed than most watches out there. And here I'm not talking about the ability to read the date in the wee hours of the night, but more about giving symmetry to the dial in the dark as the loomed date disc imitates an hour marker. The dial is also really well executed and they managed to capture the thick glossy paint effect on the hands that I loved on the original. All the printing and loom application is crisp and almost flawless. The one thing that is different and that I prefer on the original is the finish of the dial. While the 300T has an almost glossy finish, this one has a metallic effect that only gets seen at certain angles and it looks cool but I prefer the original. Given that this thing is pretty much one tenth the price of the original, I'm inclined on forgiving it this little detail. 
Overall, the Doxa 300T is a better watch, spec-wise, and after all, it is the original. But this blatant copy has all the things important to me, so wearability, legibility and durability done better than the original. If they switched to an on-the-fly adjustment clasp in V4 and let's say drop in a Miyota 9015 in it instead of the Seiko NH35, it really will be a better watch than the original at only a fraction of the price. When it comes to the morality of them stealing the design, I have very little sympathy for a company that didn't care about their subline at all until one man, thanks to his deep passion for these watches, single-handedly resurrected it and made it successful, only to be pushed aside by the original owners after his name usage rights expired and he tried to renew them. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and until the next video, bye.